Come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, people, let's shout all about God's grace. Whoa, let us compare it every day. See me moving in a special world. Come on, children, let's sing. Come on, children, let's shout. The Lord is mighty in the doubt of you. Hey, y'all, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house, okay? With me, your host, Khadija, where we talk about the insanity that goes on in our communities. First of all, in our countries, in our country, in our states, in our cities. And let's just break it down because state, community, and cities equal people, right? Okay, and families equal community. So the people in your family step out your door, they become the citizens of the community. And if the citizens in the community are out of balance and out of order, then you have a corrupt environment. And you have more corrupt people in an environment than not. And the sad part with, uh, about um, black people in general is most of us are put in situations where we have been redlined and um, put in situations where um, we're relegated to certain areas, which enhances the mental illness. So y'all wonder why I call this the mental house? Because day after day after day after day, you hear you hear stories that are literally crazy. They're mental. They're, and a lot of these stories um, are borderline on lack of self-control. And if we had entities in our community, if we had therapists accessible to us in our communities, maybe we would learn how to fuse and deal with our emotions a little better because everything is emotional. We can get a hold to the other five senses, but these emotions in most of our communities are totally out of control. And to give you an example of one of the most saddest stories of an individual being out of control um, is this particular story about Randall Wright. And I want to share this with you and his 21-year-old son, Jakari. A father is accused of killing his own son. Okay? Hold on, you guys. Hello? Yes. Okay. Uh huh. I'm ready. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, with that being said, um, the father is accused of killing his own son. Wait a minute, y'all. I want you to hear me. So, all you parents out there who have stuck in the house with your children during COVID. And you probably didn't really know how bad their asses really were um, until you had to be locked in a room with them. All the men that can't escape and go have an affair or the women that can't escape and have an affair, you're pretty much stuck inside with the people that you have chose to be uh, with. And a lot of that is not working out well. Um, and a lot of it, if you don't have control of your emotions, some real bad things can happen. Real bad things. Um, and that's why um, in our communities, you know, everybody is strapped because that's how it goes. And, and not saying that it's right, it's good, but it's almost like American Express. You don't want to leave home without it at this point. Um, it's just so sad. Anyway, this father is accused of uh, of of he's stemming from an argument about cleaning. His room. Did y'all hear what I said? Uh, so it sent shockwaves through the neighborhood. Excuse me. Randall White, 47, is charged with first-degree reckless homicide in the shooting death of his 21-year-old son, Jakari Wright. 
Randall Wright appeared visibly shaken in the courtroom, and he told the people, I, I lost my son on some bullshit that shouldn't have even went down. Yes, most of the people that sit behind bars right now are saying the same thing because of a moment of being totally out of control emotionally. They can get, we can get behind our, 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 our sense of sight, no smelling, taste, hearing. I mean, we can get behind and we can actually uh, understand and compartmentalize. It is those emotions that will leave you in your life in shambles. You got men that walk in or, or find that their wives or their girlfriends have cheated on them and emotionally they can't handle it. All these women out here, they cannot emotionally handle the fact that their woman, their girl, decided to find somebody else, get some more pain. Or the woman, you know, the man decided to get some more vagina. What in the world would you kill somebody over something so hideous for? Or so simple, so crazy. Because your emotion. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. So I'm not here to try to, you know, make you feel bad. I'm trying to here to make you think. The complaint indicates when officers asked him what happened, Wright stated, we had a big fight, an argument. He went on to say, I told him to clean up his room and things together, you know, and just was something that was constantly going back and forth. So I got my gun and he's like, kill me, kill me. I want to die. I said, no, just get your stuff and leave. Then we start wrestling and the gun went off. We're dealing with a man who himself is dealing with the tragic loss of his son, which by all accounts was accidental. A son who he was trying to get control of, trying to keep from running around on the streets and trying to get to behave, said Christian Thomas, his attorney. Randall Wright told officers during the scuffle, Jakari Wright grabbed him by his shirt and then by his hair. To avoid Jabari uh, grabbing the firearm, Randall said he pushed Jakari while stepping back into something and losing his balance, and it caused the gun to go accidentally off. But there was a decision, a violation to introduce a weapon and try to get a young person's attention, said the judge. There's just some decision about that that just don't sit right. Prosecutors, prosecutors say there are conflicts with Randall's account of what happened based on the fact that the victim was shot in the back of the head. Those findings, prosecutors say, are more consistent with Randall shooting Jakari after the victim turned his body on the defendant. Medical examiner's report indicates Jakari died from a single gunshot wound. If convicted, Wright faces up to 60 years in prison and he's due back in court on Thursday. This is extremely, extremely sad. Um, I mean, this is the madness that we are dealing with in our community. Somebody has got to get a hold and get a grip on what is going on. We have to take seriously that our mental capacity, our ability to handle pain is not an emotional uh, 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 charge. is not where it should be. And my first reaction cannot be to get a gun and blow somebody's damn brain out. There is a problem in the thinking. And the reason why I'm saying that is I hate to do this uh, 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 comparison of, 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 of humanity and, and whiteness, but when you look at the dominant society, the white society, yes, there is white on white crime. Absolutely, there is white on white crime. But they don't have the self-hatred that we're dealing with. They don't have the um, being taught that black is nothing. My skin complexion, my culture. They don't have the, uh, um, I guess the 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 mantra of that being pushed into their psyche on the twenty four hours 
basis. So they have some value in one another. We don't have any value in ourselves at all. I mean, you know, same thing with this. I, you know, I had a really bad feeling with this, and this is a young man. Uh, the young man is only 19 years old, and he was accused of killing a co-worker of mine. He actually, he was sentenced uh, to like um, 30 years in prison and then another 15 years of extended supervision for his role in a faded uh, shooting of city inspector Greg Zing. Uh, Seswick. Okay. Now, he continues, this guy, to deny that he was the shooter. The prosecutors say that Scott was part of a carjacking crew that fatally shot Greg, okay, in an attempt to rob him in March near 22nd and Cherry, where the housing inspector was on the job. A jury found Scott guilty of felony murder. They were doing carjacking and killed a man in the most violent of deaths. Despite the felony murder conviction, the outcome of the court was a win for the defense. Prosecutors were hoping Scott would be convicted of first-degree reckless homicide, a much more serious offense. You know, I knew Ziggy. We, we worked together. Scott was also uh, convicted of two other felonies, operating fleet, eluding officers, and bodily harm to property damage, possession of a uh, firearm by a felony. You know, a handful of heartbroken family members of Greg's spoke out at the sentencing hearing. His widow, Ola, um, told Scott that he took her whole world away. I have this ache that is always present at times. It's difficult to breathe. I miss his kiss, his touch, his stupid jokes. He does not deserve a second chance. He did not give one to Greg. Um... He thought the world was filled with beauty, but there is no beauty in Scott, said Heather. There is no amount of time that would be that would satisfy me because it is not going to bring Greg back. But I'm happy that at least this happened. That's what his wife said. And that's just the key thing, y'all. No matter what they do to these perpetrators, it won't bring our loved ones back. It won't bring them back. You know, and if it did, I wish they asked him to get a thousand damn years. Just give him a thousand years. But it's not going to bring my loved one back. It's not going to bring your loved one back. So my job is to process of the emotion and to handle the emotion of somebody actually taking my loved one away. Um, Which feels a lot considerably different than your loved one passing away. I just want y'all to know that, first of all, there's a very distinct feeling when somebody murders your loved one and if he just passes away. Uh, you know, the sad part about it is there's a bunch of young black men all in jail. Quinlaw Shaw, 18, um, Aquasia, you, I can't even pronounce the boy's name. Q H U A L U N Shaw. Eric Smiley. Uh, the Shaw is only 18. Eric Smiley is 22. They're all um, questioning and they're all uh, involved in the murder of Ziggy. This is our community. You know, and we can't go on like this, y'all. We cannot go on like this. Anyway, I want to know your opinion. What y'all think? Do y'all think that we're sick? Or do you think that, oh, it's just the hood and this way it's supposed to be? Do you think the black community was always like this? Or do you think we have become psychotic with all this, the drugs and stuff we take? You know, 
uh, the Molly, the Percocets, the heroin, the cocaine, all of it. Good alcohol. You know, people that are depressed always find a way to get high. Come on now. So, we're probably the most um, charged up when we high or when we feel the alcohol and drugs which binds our melanin. Now, that's a whole other story we don't want to get into. But what do y'all think about this? What do y'all think about the destruction that's happening? In, and this is not just my city. This is every black city, USA. What's the linchpin in all of this? Why are black people killing themselves all over the world? All over the country. I ain't going to say all over the world. I'm going to say all over the country. Why? Let me know what y'all think and leave your comment below. I really appreciate it. Because I want to know what you think. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe. Please share the channel. And I want to see you in the next video. Thank you.